Darling. Yes? I know you're very busy, right? But I've been thinking mm -hmm, that the house could use a little zhuzhing. Aha. It's just, darling, darling, have you seen this catalog? Mm hmm And how your house does not look like this catalog. Those pictures are professionally designed and art directed. Uh-huh. And professionally photographed by the best commercial photographers. Mm-hmm. Using thousands of dollars worth of decor. Right. Also, there's this very interesting website on the internet called Paint and Trust. Pinterest, yeah. Mm -hmm. With all sorts of beautiful pictures you could look at. I'm aware. Also, there's this funny thing on my phone called Ein Stock Rob. Instagram. With a seemingly endless source of decorating ideas. Yes, I'm actually on Instagram. But I have to say, my favorite is the catalog. Oh. Why am I not surprised? It's just so, so, so expensive. Expensive, yeah. Mm. I'm circling the things I want you to order. The children don't need to go to college, darling. Oh, zhuzh, zhuzh, zhuzh. Hey everyone, I'm Andy. Welcome to Furniture Fables. Have you ever cooked a big meal and then when it's finally time to sit down and eat it, you're just kind of over it? Decorating can be like that for me. Just about when I've finally got a room right where I want it, I'm ready for something new, which could get pretty expensive, except for the fact that every once in a while, this furniture fabler becomes a decor fabler. This different little fable starts here at the farmhouse, right at the end of the stairs. Back when the girls were little, John and I took the plunge and got a whole bunch of chickens. The girls were so excited to help feed and raise and care for them. And I took many, many pictures of them out in the garden with all of the hens. I printed out some favorites in a sepia tone and I've displayed them in these two stylized picture frames for many years. Every day when I come downstairs, I have a sweet reminder of this lovely time of our lives and I love that, but I have for quite some time been over these photo mounts. They are very heavily distressed as you can see and their color has never really done for the sepia toned pictures what I was hoping it would. So it's just always kind of looked dull and drab to me. And so I carefully took them off the wall and brought them out to the workshop. I figured this would probably be a good time to go shopping in the family room closet. And so I ended up grabbing these two bird prints and some glassware pieces, and also this vintage pitcher that I found at an antique shop. It was only $10, I think, because it had been damaged, and also its floral print is probably not super in demand. Then, right before I got started, I dug out these two picture frames that I had bought from Michaels about a year and a half ago and just stuck in the back of the closet and had never done anything with. So, there we go. My work was definitely cut out for me, so I began. First, I removed all of those old pictures from those holders, and then I decided that I wanted to remove the two metal rosettes on these picture frame pieces. So I used some pliers to bend the petals up and then just kind of loosened that a little bit and they just kind of popped right off. Yep, there they go. All right, time to do some cleaning. I used a little bit of some simple green to scrub the frames and the metal scrolls down and then gave them a good rinse and let them dry in the sunshine. Once they were nice and dry, I gave them a quick sanding just to knock off any 
loose old paint. And then I used a tack cloth to wipe them down, making sure I got all of the sand out of those grooves. Okay, ready to prime. So for quickness and convenience, I decided to spoil myself and use my spray can of Bin Shellac based primer. I gave both of the pieces a really good thorough coating on the wood frames as well as all of the metal work. So I decided to paint my picture frames with this beautiful deep rich bronze color. This one is called Restoration Bronze. It's by Melange. But really when you're working with decor, you can use whatever really you've got on hand. I ended up doing three coats. This probably would have been a great project to use my spray gun with. Definitely a lot of little curves and details to get into. And on that last third coat, I used my zebra square brush, which actually did a great job getting into those groovy frame planks. Once they had dried, I decided to add a little bit of gold. I used a little super glue to glue down these bronze pulls in the center, and then I got out some gilding wax. I used a little artist brush to feather on some of the gold wax, kind of focusing on those joinery parts, those, those little metal joiners. And also adding a little bit extra of that gold detail at the center of each of the pieces. Whenever you are doing pairs of something, it is always a good idea to put them right side by side and take a good look because yeah <laughs> definitely one of my picture frames had a heavier application of the gold than the other one i made sure that they were even and then i hung them on my staging wall so that i could have another good look whoa that worked that actually worked my theory worked the sepia looks so good now it's always a great feeling when your ideas work, right? <laughs> I added a little brown wax over the frames to give the paint some protection and to richen and deepen that bronze color. And since I had that color out, I decided to go ahead and prep my glassware. I gave that little pitcher a sanding just to kind of rough up that glazed finish. If you wanted to, you could absolutely prep pieces like this with primers that are designed for glass or slippery surfaces, but I kind of just decided I wanted to go for it and take my chances. I sprayed all three with that restoration bronze color. You can see I'm kind of adjusting the nozzle tip on my Wagner Flexio spray gun that so I can kind of get in under that handle, get those curved details. So here we are after the first coat. You can definitely see that I've missed a few spots. Yep, right up in there. So I got my spray gun out and I hit those spots that I had missed on all of the pieces. And then I gave them all a light second coat. Okay, for our last project, Yep, I did say last project. You remember those sweet little bird pictures. I decided I wasn't really sure exactly what I wanted to do with those two. So I think I will save them for a future fable. Okay, back to our last project. I removed the innards of the picture frame and then I measured out a piece of thin plywood. 
using some clamps, I attached it to my work table and I cut it down with my circular saw. I added a little bit of wood glue and then I mounted the plywood into that frame. Okay, so here's where things get a little bit dupey. Pottery barn dupe e, <laughs> to be exact. I had been lusting after the wood inlaid art pieces by Alexandra Z that are carried by Pottery Barn. She does these super cool wood pieces in shades of natural golds. And I thought I might be able to create something with a similar look using my forgotten Michaels frames and my leftover pine trim. So using the backing board of one of the picture frames, I sketched out a design inspired by those pieces. Here's what I came up with. Now that's a lot of lines <laughs> and I am not Alexandra Z. So I decided to file this design under hashtag goals and instead do a simplified version that I thought would still evoke a similar look and feel. I marked on my design map which pieces I was going to actually be creating and then using the leftover pine trim, I began measuring, marking and cutting. You can see I'm kind of doing a softly penciled map for myself right onto the plywood. So after a little bit of trial and error, I decided that setting my miter saw on 30 was perfect for the look that I was going for. And after I had that figured out, things moved along pretty quickly. Okay, once I had my pieces all cut, I numbered them on the back and numbered where they would sit on the plywood. And then I used my surf prep sander to sand down the frame as well as the plywood and all of the pine pieces, making sure to get all the little sharp edges and corners. Then I got out some stain and finishing oil in white by Fusion. Here you can really see how it is both things, stain and finishing oil. The stain or pigment is sitting on the bottom and the oil is on the top. I stirred it really, really well and then applied a layer with a chip brush to the plywood and the frame just to make sure that they would have the same tone of white. And then making sure I had the correct pieces, not these, not these, yep, these, there we go. I applied that same whitewash to my wood planks. Remember that wood is porous and so it will soak up a product like this and then once it has soaked up whatever it wants to, the rest will just sit on the top. So you want to make sure that you get back in there and wipe back any product that's remaining after about 20 minutes. After I had done my white pieces, I added some SFO in natural or no color 
to the remaining pine pieces. So this is probably kind of crucial. I let everything dry for three days and then I used some wood glue to install those pine tiles. As I went, I made sure to wipe up any little bits of glue and I also made little adjustments here and there, making sure Everything is fitting just right, looking at my guidelines. Once all the pieces were in place, I set aside both frames and let them dry overnight. Okay, it has passed the hold it upside down and shake it test. So I took my design sketch backboard and I set it into the back of the frame. So are we done? Oh, oh yeah, remember this little guy? Well, no chic modern redesign for him. Instead, we are just gonna have a little bit of fun. Painter's tape is not too hard to cut, friends. You can do a lot with it. This is a fabulous color called Copperhead Orange. I used this in my simple seasonal makeover last year on a desk that I had scooped for free and it sold in about one day with several offers. I could not believe it. That would be a fun fable to check out if you are in the mood for some fabulous October-y vibes. Okay, do you remember my pile of outdated, unwanted decor? With nothing too terrible, just no longer lighting up the room, well, here they are now. Wow, I cannot believe what this bronze paint color has done for my sepia-toned pictures. They look rich and warm with glints of gold. And here are these guys now. I thought about transfers, I thought about some gilding wax, and I thought about a glossy top coat. But in the end, this solid matte bronze won out. My leftover glassware looks like high-end pottery, and I am rejoicing in this picture's shape that I can now finally see and really appreciate. All right, here comes our big finish. Here these two are now. Whoa, with a huge nod of respect to our inspiration artist, I have to say I am loving these and I honestly cannot believe they were Michael's frames and scraps from my IKEA projects. You know, sometimes it's not the big things, the big dressers and dining tables. Sometimes it's the little things. So what did all this zhuzhing cost me? Well, nothing really, if you wanna look at it one way. Of course, to be fair, at one point I did buy all of this stuff as well as all of the stuff that I used to refresh it, but a lot of that stuff were scraps, leftovers that I had on hand anyway. In any case, I estimate that I used only about $50 worth of products for everything. So pretty good deal. I hope that you enjoyed this definitely different kind of fable. If so, please give me a thumbs up and make sure to hit that subscribe button. And please let me know, what did you think? Were these refresh projects worth the effort? Did you have a favorite? 
any of them tempting the DIYer within? I don't know. I think there might be a pretty good homemade Christmas present idea in there. Hmm. Thank you so much for joining me, my friends. I promise I will be back next week with more furniture, and I will see you then for more Furniture Fables.